This is the Metropolitan Lounge in Union Station, Chicago. The Metropolitan Lounge, which is located in major stations, although in some stations it's called by a different name, is for use by first class passengers only, otherwise known as sleeper car passengers. They're usually fairly large with lots of comfortable seating. This one is showing only part of the lounge. There are restrooms for use only by the lounge passengers. There are uh, uh, drink machines for coffee, tea, and soft drinks which are free to passengers in the lounge. And there's also free uh, baggage checking to hold your bags if you want to go out and wander around the train station while waiting for your train. And then you can pick it up again once you return to the lounge. In most cases the train is boarded directly from the lounge or from a nearby gate and they will make announcements uh, telling you when it's time to leave the lounge. Again, my name is Hannah Maria. We're delighted you chose rail as your choice of transportation. You just sit back and enjoy the journey. Hello, this is a supplement to my earlier video on YouTube titled Superliner Roomette Tour WMV. This video has proven to be quite popular and there have been a number of requests sent to me with additional questions. I thought I'd answered everything the first time around, but I was far off the mark. And there are, in fact, many other details that people would like to know when planning their first uh, Amtrak Superliner tours, whether in a roomette or another uh, type of room in the sleeper cars. Uh, this video supplement is still focused on roomettes, but I will try to answer a few more questions about the rest of the car and the train experience. This is a little better scripted than the first video, so hopefully I won't forget to cover anything. Amtrak requires the use of regular shoes while on board the train. I haven't seen them discourage things like flip-flops, but I have heard them make casual comments to passengers, so it's really recommended that you bring some sort of a regular pair of shoes for use while on the train. Uh, and especially they will enforce this while you are outside of your sleeper car room. Once you're in your room, of course, you can have your shoes off, but elsewhere they do enforce the wearing of shoes. Uh, in addition, you should bring a pair of flip-flops along if you're going to use the shower room in the sleeper car. If you're in a full-size bedroom, which has its own shower, then of course you can do whatever you like but it's highly recommended to bring flip-flops for use in the uh, what they call the public shower, although it's really only for use by the people in that car. While we watch the scenery go by, I'm going to cover a few points that don't really have any video to go with them. First off, each sleeper car, which is where all the rooms are, has its own sleeper car attendant. Uh, that attendant's job is to see to the uh, passengers in that car only, so they're not serving other cars. Uh, the sleeper car attendant stays on the car and serves only his or her assigned car passengers. He or she is available day and night and knows the passengers who are in his or her car. They recognize the faces, they're very good at this, and they seem to know you almost right away once you've introduced yourself when boarding the uh, train. The uh, attendant has an assigned roomette of their own 
on the upper level it's always room number one it's right in the middle of the car so they're centrally located to assist uh, all the passengers uh, they will make up your rooms for day and night time basically stowing the mattresses and the sheets and so on uh, they will do this usually while you're at breakfast or while you're at dinner and they keep pretty good tabs on where you are so uh, usually you come back from dinner and the room is made up for uh, sleeping and vice versa in the morning after breakfast although if you don't want to have them do that all you have to do is tell them when you would like it done and they'll do it uh, if you want to sleep all day long they'll leave the room made up for that as well so it's quite flexible but if you don't say anything expect that they're going to change it uh, while you're at breakfast and dinner. Uh, the sleeping car attendant puts newspapers under your door every morning just like at a hotel. It's usually USA Today or a local paper from whichever town the train went through early in the morning. Uh, the sleeping car attendant will provide coffee, tea, juice, bottled water for free to the uh, passengers in his or her own car. Uh, if you choose to take meals in your room, uh, the sleeping car attendant can arrange for that as well. Uh, the sleeping car attendant will make sure you are awakened in advance of stops if you're getting off the train somewhere during the night and uh, uh, need to be awakened uh, you know, in time to prepare for getting off. Uh, during the day they make announcements during the nighttime the PA system is kept turned off to avoid waking people up So your sleeping car attendant will know when you're supposed to get off Make sure you're awake and ready to get off so you don't miss your stop Of course if you're going to the end of the line then they're not going to do that and you just get off with everybody at the end uh, Sleeping car attendants are paid. They don't need to be tipped, but it's conventional to tip them it seems like common rule of thumb says something on the order of ten dollars a day and since there aren't any trips longer than three days your maximum would be thirty dollars many websites recommend a maximum of twenty dollars and it's best to give it to them uh, when you're getting off the train instead of when you uh, get on it early you know when you first board it in my previous video I discussed stowage of items inside the room uh, specifically the roomette and uh, here's what I like to do I've got a little better lighting for this than the last trip and by the way I should say that this supplemental video is taken on the Southwest Chief going from Chicago to Los Angeles in May of uh, 2012 uh, anyway I usually bring a single airline uh, overhead storage type of uh, suitcase and a backpack, a small backpack, not a camping backpack. And uh, I tend to hang the backpack from the topmost coat hook by the mirror. It keeps it out of the way. And then my suitcase, those carry-on size suitcases are perfectly sized to sit on the top step that's used for access to the upper bunk. And it still allows enough room for the top step to be used. This is a good place to stow the bag it can't fall to the left or right because of the the wall and the uh, top of the seat and uh, it doesn't I've never seen it fall out even on the roughest tracks so I would recommend this location for day and nighttime storage of your bag yeah. one additional yeah. tip with the roomette is sometimes when people have a lot more luggage and they're only traveling um, with one person they'll lower the upper bunk and put their baggage on the upper bunk and then just sit underneath it. Since the uh, top of the headrest, the seat, is still underneath the top bunk when it's lowered, you can do that, but you can't stand up then. Uh, you have to kind of hunch down when you're standing up to leave the, uh, the room at. But it is a way to carry more luggage in the roomette if you don't want to put it in the downstairs luggage storage area. I mentioned before that it's handy to bring a GPS along. Um, I have a newer GPS than was shown in the uh, previous video. Uh, but in either case you can stick it on the window with the normal windshield suction mount and uh, 
they're invaluable to show you where you are. I think it just makes the trip more enjoyable. Uh, one thing that you can do is put your GPS into what Garmin at least calls walking mode or pedestrian mode. In this way, it doesn't try to place you uh, on a road necessarily. It's going to be more flexible in where it shows you. Okay, I've got the uh, GPS sorted out on the Garmin Nuvi, at least the newer models like I'm showing here. Uh, if I was in walking mode, it showed my position as a dot, but it wasn't panning the display, so I was actually off the screen already. I found that I had to put it in uh, bicycle mode in order to get a combination of having it pan the map as I move and also uh, not force me to be on a road on the display so it'll show me wherever the train actually is and you can see it's still showing it with a tra uh, car icon in the middle of the screen but again this is very useful and makes the trip much more enjoyable okay on the last video the tray table was broken let's see if this one works any better oh much better On the previous video, I mentioned that the the audio control did not seem to work, or the speakers didn't work. That wasn't quite correct. The speaker in the ceiling uh, does work, although it seems to only work for announcements. I've never seen it work for any music, and that's probably just as well. They wouldn't play what you want to listen to anyway. Uh, but they do make announcements over it. They make announcements such as when they're approaching major stops and uh, during the daytime to let you know when meal times are and when the cafe, cafe car opens and closes and so on. Note that the uh, PA system does not operate during nighttime, at least after a reasonable hour, maybe 9 or 10 o'clock, so that it doesn't disturb sleeping passengers. Uh, another useful piece of information is that Amtrak does prefer to keep the cars fairly quiet. I think you can tell from this car when I'm not talking. That's fairly quiet. A little bit of a noise from the rails and uh, not too much else. Uh, so if you're going to have a... Oh, here we go. Fairly Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Scott down in the cafe car. Cafe car is located in the lower level of the lounge car. Lounge car is that car with the big windows just before you get to the diner. In the center of the lounge car is a set of stairs that leads down to the cafe car. At your leisure, please come on down to the cafe car. I'll be more than happy to take care of you. We've got a large selection of hot and cold beverages, sandwiches, and snacks for your edible and drinking pleasure. When coming to the cafe car, as well as anywhere else on this train, ladies and gentlemen, you must have shoes on. What did this I tell you? This is a health and safety requirement. Socks are not considered shoes. I will continue this announcement after Naperville. Anyway, since he's not talking now, uh, if you're going to have a DVD player, an MP3 player, video games, anything like that, uh, they really want you to use headphones so that you don't disturb other passengers. So plan on bringing headphones, earbuds, something of that sort. Uh, in reality, if you're in a sleeper car room, of any sort, roomette, full-size room, uh, you shouldn't really hear much from any other passengers if your door is closed. If you uh, bring a cell phone and have a smartphone especially, you'll find that you can usually access your uh, your network, you know, Verizon or, or whoever you use, uh, but sometimes in the mountains and and some parts to the route you're not going to get uh, very good coverage but by and large I found that you can get both voice and data coverage so you can uh, access email and and surf the web and do things like that during the trip but there doesn't seem to be any Wi-Fi on the trains at least not on most trains so I wouldn't count on uh, having your personal notebook computer uh, accessing the web or email uh, you have to go through your cellular connection. Snacks. The cafe car is downstairs in the lounge car, or the cafe is downstairs in the lounge car, and they do sell 
you know, sandwiches, small personal pizzas, chips, candy bars, all sorts of things, uh, all sorts of fruit juices, bottled water, sodas, beer, wine, and uh, the prices are convenience store level or a bit higher, so they're not very economical, but it is convenient. And uh, I personally choose to bring in a bag of uh, drinks and snacks for my own use. Uh, and that usually handles me through most of the trip. And it's a lot cheaper to do it that way. Uh, more on cell phones. Uh, Amtrak prefers that you keep phone conversations in the sleeper cars to within your own room. And if you're going to use the phones uh, out in the aisleway of the car, uh, that you keep the calls fairly short and at a, a low conversational level. They really frown on loud conversations or extended conversations in the public parts of the car. And cell phone use of any kind is prohibited in the dining car, although you can use it in the lounge car or the cafe. Although the cafe car attendant has a lot of leeway in what rules they set, and they're not always the same. So you might find that a cafe car attendant says no cell phone use in the cafe. So I would always listen to the announcements for that. Water beverage containers are allowed inside the cafe area. Microwave in the cafe car is for items purchased from the cafe car only. Sorry, but no outside food or beverages are allowed inside the cafe car microwave. Seating in the, mic in the cafe car is very limited. Therefore, only persons purchasing items from the cafe car may sit in the cafe car. Once you are finished with your purchase, we do ask that you make the seats available for others to use. Also, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for any inconvenience, but we do not accept personal checks, traveler's checks, or foreign currency. This is a non-smoking train. That means nowhere on this train are you allowed to smoke. There are smoke stops along the route. The conductor will make those announcements at the stations where there will be smoke stops. Please do not smoke between the cars or in the restrooms. Thank you. Okay, uh, a few notes about security on the cars. If you're in a roomette or any other kind of bedroom, you'll find that all doors can be latched from the inside only. As shown here, it's a simple latch. And there's a little security thing here which flips up over it, keeps it from being popped from the outside. Some of them also are supposed to have a latch here, but I've always seen them jammed. I don't think they use them anymore. It's just, just this latch here. Uh, so when you're in your room sleeping, for example, nobody's going to bother you. I'm not sure if the uh, car attendants have some way to get that open. Perhaps they do, but nobody else does for sure. So uh, while you're in your room, you can have it locked. However, once you're out of the room, uh, the, the door is essentially unlocked. You know, if you're at the dining car or the bathroom or what have you, uh, it's recommended that you pull the curtains all the way across and leave it that way when you're outside of the room. Uh, that way, any valuables you may have laying in the room are out of, away from prying eyes and, uh, also, people can't tell if you're in the room or not, so nobody's going to just barge in anyway. So that's a good idea for your own uh, security of your valuables when you're outside of the room. Uh, a few words about where you can go on the train. Uh, only passengers with tickets for a particular sleeper car can actually go into that car. Uh, so if you're in sleeper car number one, for example, you can go into that sleeper car, but you're not supposed to go into the others and uh, other passengers from the rest of the train, including all the coach passengers, are not allowed in any of the sleeper cars. Uh, however, since the train is linear, one car in front of another, if you're in a uh, sleeper car and you have to go through a couple of other sleeper cars to get to the dining car or the lounge car, of course, then you can do it, but you're not allowed to loiter. You have to simply pass through and, uh, and not stay in the cars that you're not actually assigned to be in. Uh, uh, the sleeper car attendant for each car knows who should be in the car and who shouldn't be there. And Amtrak is quite proactive in dealing with people who enter parts of the train that they should not be in. I'm showing uh, 
here's the scanner in operation. Restriction number 4022 void, 4022 void. If, you, if you're not showing that on your JTP, just disregard it. We do have authority to proceed through your limits, maximum authorized speed. Unless otherwise restricted, westbound on one. Okay by your red flag at 102.2 without stopping. Your main equipment are in the clear. Whistle freely through the limits. Over. That's it, okay. Thanks a lot, you two. Copy to repeat for out. Three out. I was asked in the previous video to show a bit more of the car. Here's the door from one car to the next, and this is actually a piece of bumpy track, so there's a lot of jouncing around right here. Normally it's quite smooth, but you do get some bad sections. You can see the next sleeper car in the distance, and all the doors open by pushing a button like this. And you can also push them with your feet. always avoid stepping on the moving part and step over it. Superliner sleeper cars have two levels. This is the upper level. Uh, on one end of the car there are ten roomettes, so we're going to walk past those. There's my roomette. center of the car is the ice and water coffee machine. I think you can get tea here. There's boxes of juice, a big trash container, napkins, things like that. And the car attendant has a room right here. Restrooms are very much like airline restrooms, although usually a bit nicer in the appointments, but it's very much like an airline restroom. Sink, lavatory, paper towels, not much else. There's one such one such restroom upstairs right in the middle of the car. If you continue to the other end of the car, then the aisle switches from the middle to the side of the car to make room for the full-size bedrooms. At the other end of the car, the aisle switches back to the middle, going back down towards the middle. go downstairs at this point. And here in the middle of the car downstairs is the luggage storage area. This is where you can put baggage that you don't have room for in your room but that you don't want to check so you have access to it during the trip. Downstairs in the car is the vestibule door on each side, so depending on which side the station's on when the train pulls up, you can get in and out either way. Going towards one end of the car are four more roomettes and the family bedroom at the far end. Going the other way are two more restrooms just like the one upstairs. and the handicapped accessible room, which has its own bathroom. In addition, there's the shower room, which has a, a changing seat, an area to put your clothes to keep them dry, and then the shower itself, which has a small seat if you choose to use it and the shower nozzle on a hose so you can uh, 
get it wherever you need it. And of course the drain, I understand that drains directly onto the tracks. Again, you're recommended to use flip-flops when you're in the shower just to prevent things like athlete's foot or other issues since it is a car being used by people you don't know. You can see that when the shower is in use, the water just runs out onto the tracks. What are you going to do, Dad? I know that in my first video I said there were three restrooms downstairs, and there are in fact only the two, not counting the third one, which is in the handicapped accessible room at the end of the hall. Amtrak provides towels in your room or roomette uh, and they'll bring you new ones if you need them for each day if you want to use the shower. In addition there are usually towels in the shower changing room in the morning uh, which you can use as well. While I never put luggage in the luggage area downstairs because I travel lightly, uh, it is considered a fairly secure location but nobody's watching it. Um, it's really a good idea to have some sort of lock on your bag so people can't pilfer through it but again the only people in the car are people who are staying in that car and it's very unlikely anybody's going to bother your bags but it's still a good idea to lock them and in addition the car attendant has a pretty good idea who should be on the in the car and who shouldn't be and if they were to see somebody try to get on at a station for example um, they wouldn't be allowed to to walk around in here and have access to the baggage. If you're in a roomette, you're not going to have a sink or a toilet in your room and you have to use one of the two restrooms downstairs or the one upstairs and while that may seem like a hardship it's actually not bad because people in the full-size bedrooms have their own toilet sinks and, and showers and uh, the people in the roomette then and the uh, people in the family room are the only ones that are sharing the uh, three restrooms and the shower. So during the course of the day it's very unlikely you're going to have a situation where you have to wait for access to a room. Maybe the shower in the morning if you go down a uh, period just before breakfast sometimes you may have to wait for somebody else to finish but usually there's no problem at all. It's very much different from an airplane where you have, might have to wait quite a while to get into a restroom. One more thought on restrooms. If you're in the dining car, you can go to your own room if you need a, a restroom, or you can go back to the lounge car, which is usually the next car, and use the restrooms there. And pretty much you can use almost any restroom on the train. You don't have to go back to the one in your own sleeper car. Going to the dining car.
Okay, trying to have a little better video of the room in the nighttime mode uh, than the last time. I've got a little better light this time. So, a good place for your baggage stowage is right here, wedged in between the top of the headrest and the wall. On top of the top step still allows you the top step for getting into the upper bunk if you want to. Otherwise it makes a nice nightstand combination bookshelf. And you can hang smaller lighter boy bags from the coat hooks. So there's the bed all the way around. And stepping out into the aisle, you can see the space here. Except I have to get out of the way for our smiling Hey! Sweet dreams! <laughs> Good night. See, there's a small space that you can stand up in next to the bed. Alcoholic beverages in your room or roomette. This is a beer I bought in the cafe downstairs in the lounge car. And if you are in a sleeper car, you can bring your own alcohol in, or you can buy alcohol in the dining car or cafe and bring it back to your room and consume it. Uh, the coach uh, passengers cannot consume alcohol except in the dining and cafe car, so that's a perk of being in the sleeper car. Well, of course, you can't have drunken parties, but at least you can have a beer or some wine in, in the privacy of your own room or roomette. Okay, the roomette in nighttime mode with the lights off for the most part. <clears throat> Only lit up by the reading light. The upper bunk is still stowed. There's enough coat hooks in here to hang up your daytime clothes. Got the blue night light up there. Drapes closed against the window and the night light. Well, I hope this second video has answered more questions that weren't covered the first time around. It's all I can think of to talk about, and I hope it's useful to you.